Good evening, class. Good afternoon. It's a great privilege to be a member of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research, such as what this school is. Mm -hmm. Because it is allowing us to anticipate our eventual state and condition <coughs> in Yahweh's creation, the world and the universe. We all are heading for a metaphysical state. Whether we be in love with Yahweh or in Yahshua, or against his will, his pattern, plan, and purpose. We all shall have exited the physical body to be in a state of righteousness, peace, and joy throughout eternity, or in a state of bewilderment, regret, shame, suffering, torment, and darkness in the lake of fire. So this school preempts or anticipates that state to make those who are members of the body of Yahshua the Messiah, which is a spiritual reality, not necessarily Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research, although many are in it, but to make such consider themselves, or ourselves in preference, because they are including ourselves, hopefully, at least. Only transient individuals on the earth play. We're just visitors here. We're not sojourning here perpetually. We are passing through. And this is not really our world or our age. So meta means beyond, and physical means that which is gaseous, liquid, or solid, as substances. And you know, we are made up of all of it. According to 1 John chapter 5, <coughs> verses 7 and 8, it says there are three not that record. bear record in heaven. The Father, the living word mm -hmm. also, and the Holy, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. And these three are one. Mm -hmm. And there are three that bear witness inner spirit and the water and the blood mm -hmm. all of which are in our, our being and these three are green in one, yeah. in one in other words these three cooperatively function in the human body right. symbiotically you know, one is dependent on the other right. and the reciprocation of let's say circulatory system, you see, transporting the oxygenated blood all over for the welfare of the body and ridding the body of poison in the venal blood vessels, which we call veins, you know, and then that is interrelated with the digestive system. It transports the nutrients to the several systems of the body. So in like manner, we are told that the earth is Yahweh's, mm -hmm. and the fullness thereof, as it was in the real. The world, and then that dwell there. Mm -hmm. This earth is where it is. But he has bequeathed it temporarily to the enemy of souls. Why? Because he is not only intelligent, wisdom, and knowledge, but he's also beauty, love, and justice. So he's just. Then his foundation, power, and strength. And his justice is to have created. Not allowed this evil son to be an offspring, but created him to oppose him that the righteous 
beings of angels and human souls could better appreciate the righteousness of the whole family in heaven and earth, not only now, but in its new state yet to be revealed. You see, when this contrast allows darkness to be pitted against light, it will be seen very clear that the light outshines the darkness and is better. So when you look at the psalm, the 24th division, the fifth verse says what? Read it. Fifth it. Verse, psalm 24, verse 5. Yes. He shall receive the blessing mm -hmm. from Yahweh mm -hmm. and righteousness from the Elohim of his salvation. Thank you. No, the righteousness <coughs> that Yahweh is promising us <coughs> is not our righteousness. Never was, is not no, never will be our righteousness. All right. They are all filthy rights according to Isaiah. I think it's chapter 64 and verse 6. Mm -hmm. The righteousness that he promises us is himself. You know, dwelling in our soul and as our soul. So, in the long run, throughout eternity, there will have been one soul. Just one soul, not souls. Because there will have been the fulfillment of John chapter 70, verse 22, that the Savior spoke of. You want that right? Yes, sir. John 17, verse 22. Mm -hmm. He said, And the glory which thou gavest me, mm -hmm. I have given them. Now, he gave to the disciples who were becoming apostles at the time. Read on. Mm -hmm. That they may be one, uh, even as we are one. No, 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 Yahweh no, has one soul. He's not divided. We'll pick that up in. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 13, which asks a derogatory First. question. 1 Corinthians 1, verse, one verse 13. Is Messiah divided? No, there are many messiahs. That really should have been written. Is Yahshua the Messiah divided? No, right. he's not. So there is one soul. All right? And that's why he was praying in verse 22 of the same John 17. Continue reading. <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, verse 22 again of John 17. Yeah. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, mm -hmm. that they may be one, even as we are one. Yeah. And I in them, and thou in me, uh -huh. that they may be made perfect in one. That's it. Now that perfection is Yahweh El and Yahshua resurrected in our soul. And as also, right. see, but humanity is fraught with error and a propensity to do evil, even after the Holy Spirit has been dispensed to us. That relish, or if not relish, that uh, tendency to go back to the bonnet <coughs> is in human beings. And when he says to the Lord, to the testimony, <coughs> lies I have in this way. The Holy Spirit is saying, look at the life of me who became flesh. Because all of those 39 books, the first five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and the other 34, are the author, that is self, biography, life writing of Yahshua, which he did through the patriarchs and prophets. Of himself, he searched those scriptures, for they testified of him in John 5, 13. You see? So, when this enemy of souls, like we referred to earlier, looks at the fact that there is only one individual, <coughs> whoever had life story written, in detail, some 1,500 years before such an individual 
came into physical existence and lived out all of that because the spirit, soul, and body is named Yashu. You see? When he looks at that and sees that this is the same individual, our spirit, that cast him out of heaven because Yashu saw him fall. Look at is it Luke 10 verse 18? Luke 10. And just correlate that with uh, Revelation chapter 12 verse 3. Uh, Luke 10 verse 18. Verse 18. And he said unto them, I bear Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Yes, he fell. So why he fell is that there was that war mm -hmm. in heaven. And uh, he's the red dragon. He's the red dragon in verse 3. Mm -hmm. Read. Wait, Revelation 12 and 1? And 3. Revelation. Oh, 1 to 3. All right, 1 to 3. Yes. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. Yeah. A woman clothed with the sun mm -hmm. and the moon under her feet. Mm -hmm. And upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Yes. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. Thank you. Now that war which is referred to in verse 7. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. And there was war in heaven. That war was between that red dragon and Yahweh Elohim. Mm -hmm. Because it's Yahweh Elohim that created that war. See, he's the beginning of the creation of the pure spirit state of Yahweh. He just condescended in part of the Lord Elohim to create the evil angelic host and to also be the forebear of the righteous angelic host because he's the <coughs> branch we whether in our own physical bodies and souls you know angelic we incorporate human beings for a time incorporate are messengers of him which are angels so that war had a split in destination of minds. One set of minds said, oh, man. this is the right way. But what the Holy Spirit says in Psalm uh, 25, verse 16. <coughs> Psalm 25, verse 16. Turn thee unto me. Uh, Psalm Quoted to, ah, Try Psalm 14 verse 12. And then after that Psalm, I think it's 26 verse 15. 14 verse 12? Mm -hmm. No 12. It's 12, 14. Ah, 12, 14. Not Psalm in the Proverbs. Oh. Sorry, sorry. Uh, so it's Proverbs 12. 12 it's 26 verse. Quoted at 12 14. Yeah. Which one do you want? There's a way that Seema tried to have 14 12. Seema tried to have Alright. Verse 12, yeah. Proverbs. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man. No, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man. No, he seemed to have been right to many angels. Right. But the end thereof are the ways of death. There are many avenues and alleys and roads and highways and byways leading straight to that lake and they all seem right to those individuals who are of you know and that's why it's repeated i think it's um uh, 25 verse 16 and then try uh, proverbs 5 verse 1. no no no, 26. No, 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26
Proverbs 3, verse 1. My son, forget not my law. Don't forget the law of the spirits of life, who is Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. But let thine heart keep my commandments mm -hmm. for length of days mm -hmm. and long life and peace shall they add to thee. There is not only in the physical world. He's hinting at eternity. Read on. Mm -hmm. To thee. Mm -hmm. Let them shall add to thee. Verse 3. Yes. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Read. Bind them about thy neck. Mm -hmm. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of the Yahweh Elohim and man. All right. Proverbs 5, verse 4. Verse 4. But her end is bitter. Start, start from one. Verse, verse 1. From verse 1. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 5. My son, attend unto my wisdom mm -hmm. and bow thy ear unto my understanding. Yes. That thou mayest regard discretion. And that thy lips may keep knowledge. Now the opposite of intelligence is indiscretion. So if you don't regard um, intelligence, you become or we become indiscreet. Indiscreet. See? Because ignorance, I should say the opposite of wisdom is indiscretion. And the opposite of knowledge is ignorance. And the opposite of intelligence is like down to the two. Read, read on. Verse 3. Yes. For the lips of a strange woman mm -hmm. drop as an honeycomb. Is and it not only the physical woman. Right. Who is in disregard of the hour and the You know? But a strange organization preaching and teaching lies because they are all women. Anyone who speaks with other women's spirits is considered a, a woman. Read on. And her mouth is smoother than oil, mm -hmm. but her end is bitter as wormwood. Yes. Ah, the last four verses. The last four verses. Yes. Verse 20 to 23. Mm -hmm. And why wilt thou, my son, be ravished with a strange woman? Yes. And embrace the bosom of a stranger. Mm -hmm. For the ways of a man are before the eyes of Yahweh. But there are two ways being referred to. Right. Which we will look at. Read on. And he pondereth all his, do his goings. Yes. His own iniquity shall take wicked, shall take the wicked himself. Mm -hmm. And he shall be holding with the cards of his sins. Mm -hmm. 23 and last. Yes. He shall die without instruction. Yes. And the greatness of his folly, he shall go astray. In the greatness of his folly. Yeah. Yes. So the decision which faced the angels came to face humanity. <coughs> and it is very <coughs> bewildering because a decision was made to accept the evil one by the woman when she was taken out of her husband. And the decision was also made to accept the evil one by the man who was not deceived. So we see the subtlety of the strange way leading to eternal destruction. What is needed is for members of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research to realize that the anointing who is Yahshua the Messiah in us is the one guiding our souls. The human perspective, the human awareness of the two parts is not reliable. The human being can do nothing to inherit eternal life, except fully surrender yes. to the indwelling, resurrected Holy Spirit, being embodied by his soul and also embodying his or her soul. So that Holy Spirit is the one now who is keeping us throughout time and throughout eternity. Unlike the church world, which is trying to counsel 
individuals to do better and to improve. There is no improvement with a human conscience. It has to be flushed out that awareness that we had before we accepted Yahweh and Yahshua, that we can do better. That is not so. It is that our souls have been tarnished with the evil one and our souls, which is where I say souls, individual lives, need to be washed. When, when the soul is washed, the same soul that was soiled, tarnished, you see, um, filthy rags. Did you find that verse? Yeah, Isaiah 64. I, I think it was about verse 6, was it? Yeah. Uh, Isaiah 64, verse 6. Yeah. Uh, it says, But we are all as unclean things, mm -hmm. and all our righteousness, righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Yes. This snow this, this was to keep back the flow of the menstrual period on a monthly basis. And when that rag is discarded, it really becomes filthy. It's never ever washed and reused. And Yahweh is comparing the righteousness set. Because there are so many different and conflicting perspectives of who and what is right for eternal life. You see? So, uh, wait, let me uh, and we all do fade as leaves. Mm -hmm. And our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. Take, taken us away. So that's why the Holy Spirit speaking through Jeremiah. Amen. I think it's chapter 10, verse 23. <coughs> he said these words. Jeremiah 10, verse 23. Mm -hmm. O Yahweh. Oh, oh, I have the Father, Yahweh, Elohim. I know that the way of man is not in himself. No, the right way, the way leading back to eternal life, which the, the first couple forfeited. And if Yahshua did not condescend to be crucified, buried, and resurrected to say, I am he who was dead and the whole of my life forevermore, and are the keys of hell and of death in Revelation 1 verse 18 to get us out of that predicament. We would be only in that wrong way. Read on. Yeah. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Back to eternal life. Read on. O Yahweh Elohim, correct me, mm -hmm. but with judgment. Not in thine anger. Yes. Let's not bring me to nothing. All right. So he set up all sorts of distractions. It started in the Garden of Eden. And it was Moses who wrote about it. Now, one of the main distractions is the, 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 the Pharaoh of Egypt. He was concerned about his throne. So he <coughs> arranged that the deliverer who would have been Moses would be killed by killing all the bodies. But that didn't work. The Holy Spirit provided a way for Moses to be experiencing the glad tidings of our gospel in types and shadows. He went through a death born under that death decree referred to in Exodus 1, 15, a burial referred to in Exodus 2 when he was put in the ark of the Lord and a resurrection when he, the Holy Spirit, operating through uh, Pharaoh's daughter, the princess, had compassion on him. So he was able to live for 40 years in the courts of the Pharaoh in his daughter's palace. If we look at the sequences of the glad tidings with Yahshua, he went to a death when in Matthew 27 verse 50, mm -hmm. he said, it is finished, and he gave up his spirit. You know, he cried again. 
His loud voice was saying, Father, into thy hand I commend my spirit. In Luke 23, 46. When he cried again and he gave up, in other words, he gave up the living spirit. The spirit that he caused to exit the body was still living. And the eternal resurrected spirit, which he referred to in John 11, 25, before his crucifixion, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live, and whosoever liveth, believeth in me, shall never die. Believe us all this. So that spirit, in verse 18 of First Peter, chapter 3, is the preacher. First Peter. Chapter First Peter 3, 3, verse 18. Verse 18. Uh, he said, for Yahshua the Messiah mm -hmm. also at once suffered for sins. No, his physical body suffered greatly for his sins. We read about that in Isaiah 53 and also in the writings of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Johanna, John, you see, our crucifixion. But he also was peeved, very hurt in spirit. And then so, for tolerating a people who, to whom he came and they knew him not, and they disdained him. And mental and spiritual pain surpasses physical pain. It will have been mental and spiritual pain throughout eternity, that is the lake of fire. It will not be physical. It will be a yearning to be glorified which they will behold their former fellow brothers and sisters had accepted when they had rejected back in the earth plane. Notice we are saying they. Because we consider ourselves to be of the company who are not ashamed to be called brethren by Yahshua himself throughout eternity. He said it in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9 to 11. You see? Mm -hmm. So, what we have is the Holy Spirit dying, not, not dying, but causing his physical body to be bereft of life by leaving it. He went and preached with spirits in prison as we go on to read in that. You see, we were a long time without his efficacy of salvation. He's the one gathering all souls into himself, you see? And this preaching was to those from the time of the flood and even before, right back traceable to Adam and his wife Adam and the king. So, when we look at Yahshua's experience, I see that he went through all of that for us, we ought to be thankful because we will inherit, as we begin to, as we accept it, eternal life into which we are translated according to Colossians 1 30. Now, the resurrection referred to in uh, Matthew chapter 28, verse 5, is <coughs> after the burial. Matthew 28, verse 5. That burial in verse 57 of the preceding chapter is what is depicted by the perpetual state of bewilderment throughout the Old Testament. All of us can trace our death, you see, to what happened with Adam and Eve. In Adam oh, and, and, and his wife who became known as Eve, you see, uh, Genesis 3.20, renamed to the Eve. In that here, we died. We died in Adam because he was the one forbidden to eat of the tree of knowledge of the woman. The woman was inside him. So we can trace all that to that. But the, the burial of the perpetual state of darkness of our four periods, and the repetitious stories of uh, inconvenience, bewilderment, you see. Uh, suffering like unto death, unto dying, 
you can trace it with something. See, he was dying of thirst, and then his spirit revived and traced it to the Shunammite woman's son. In 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 21 hours, he died in the field, and his spirit revived him or came back, his soul came back into him. So he lived again after for a little time of being buried in that state of lifelessness. We think of the experience of Hananiah, Hazariah, and Misha in the, uh, the burning furnace. Nothing happened to them except the ropes that tied. Not in their ears were singed, though the fire was heated some seven times hotter, which killed the men that had pitched or thrown them into the fire. We think of Daniel in the lion's death. We think of Joel in the, in the, in the uh, belly of the fish. There was a contention once about whether he fell into the mouth of the fish or into the sea. And I don't know, we didn't finish that study. My awareness of it personally was that he fell into the sea. Because the book clearly says that weeds wrapped around his head and he was in the depth of the sea. And it was subsequent to that that the fish swallowed him. You know, that's Jonah chapter uh, 2. Job chapter 2, 12 verse 13. Verse 13? Uh, no, no. no not. Oh, the weed above it. Uh, chapter 1 verse 13. It's near the end. Yeah. Alright, let me see. Uh, it says the depths of the sea. Now, if you look at that story too, the depths of the sea for us would be the depths of deception. In large large you describe as the judge who. And those weeds wrapped around the head are the doctrines that mesmerize and deceive us. Because they are wrapped around the most holy place. Yes. Right? For the Yes. What for the chap chapter and two and five. Two and five. Oh, right. The waters come past me about even to the soul. Uh -huh. The depth closed me round about. Yeah. The weeds were wrapped about my head. Yes. And yeah. Now the waters come past me to the soul. The soul in is really the inward man who was not compassed by water. It's a figure of speech. What? Ah, let me be clear. That woman referred to in Revelation chapter 12, who was clothed in the sun, is the bride or wife of Yahshua. And just as though Yahweh said, Come let us make man in our image after our likeness, in verse 26 of Genesis 1, his likeness was to have his bride in him. So she was in it. But when she should have her firstborn, it would be Asha. The enemy sought to drown him with water, which is false doctrine. And it's in, it's, in, it's in Revelation. I think it's in Revelation chapter 12, the same 12. And um, try more verse. Sixteen. Yeah. yeah. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman. Yeah. That he might cause them to be carried away of the flood. Yes, of the flood. Now that flood is false doctrine. It's the all who got west there. Not only the Egyptians, but the the uh, whoever got wet as of the resurrection of Yahshua who reinstated carnal ordinances in the church and are burying people in physical water 
and continue to do so. We are jeopardizing the human soul. You see? All right. So let's look at his resurrection. <coughs> because it's not only in the deliverance of the three words, Hanan, Hazel, and Israel, and Daniel out of the lion's den, and Yoda out of the mouth of the fish that vomited in types and shadows. His resurrection is um, essentially what he fulfilled in Matthew chapter 28, verse 5. When the angels saw the women coming <coughs> to the tomb or sepulchre, this is what the angel said. Read. And the angel answered to the woman, mm -hmm. Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Yahshua. Ye seek Yahshua. Who was crucified. Mm -hmm. He is not here. Mm -hmm. For he is risen as he has said, Come to the place where Yahshua lay. No, his, his body did not see corruption. So where was the body? There is a rumor that it was stolen. You know, the Roman soldiers were paid to save. But really, his body dematerialized before it began to rot. Well, it depends. And this body is no more in existence, nor ever will be in existence. Nay, Yashu. So the highest name in heaven and earth is Yashu. And all physical bodies have other names. I don't know why there is an effort now to correlate Yashu with a human name. Even with Henry Clifford King's body name. You know, if we were looking at the religious hard talk last week, I caught a little bit. There was some Easter I don't know if he was from the Philippines or from Hawaii. But he's one of those religions where the man who proposed such doctrine said that he is the Messiah, as I said at the beginning. There are many such people. But the only Yahweh Messiah who had a spirit, soul, and body named Yahshua is the one who said rightly and without telling a lie, I am he who was there. And behold, I'm alive forevermore, and I'm the keys of hell and death. In Revelation 1 18, because his body, named Yashu, did become lifeless. So it's not alive, but the Holy Spirit cannot die and never die. And it's the perpetual resurrection and life, which for them, Lucifer, Satan, and his demons, once angels, not since cast out, demoted to demonic uh, status. They are afraid of the resurrected Yashu. They don't want to hear it. So that's why that way which seems right to a man is wrong. But he said of himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So we can't use other names, not even of ourselves. Now, when we consider the rest of the psalm, which was the scripture reading, it says, the earth is Yahweh's and the fullness thereof. But when we look at Matthew chapter 4, we see the enemy operating as if, as if it belongs to him. So read verse 3 and onwards. Matthew chapter 4. 4 and 3 and mm -hmm. so, And when the tester came to him, mm -hmm. he said, If thou be the son of Yahweh, Ellen, command these stones to be made bread. Mm -hmm. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, mm -hmm. but by every word of, that proceedeth out of the mouth of Yahweh, Ellen. Then the devil taketh him up yeah, so, into so, a... What is that person? Five. Oh, it's five, I should say. Anyway, let's still deal with four since you mentioned it. You see, if you look at Deuteronomy, time up, time. Look at Deuteronomy, I think it's 8 verse 4. Is that that, Anthony? 
are the embodiment of his resurrection. Because when he said, go ye therefore and teach all nations, he's talking about himself going to all nations. Who is going to do the teaching? He has sure resurrected in us. He said, in him is all power. Mm -hmm. In heaven and earth. You see? So this resurrected one is the one who will do greater works resurrected in the human soul than he was even in his physical body. He said, greater works will he do that I have done. The great thing which was to resurrect people physical. Now that bell went. So let us be thankful that although the enemy was saying later on in Matthew chapter 4, mm -hmm. you, you know, uh, bow down and worship me, and I will give you all these kingdoms of the world. Yes, the earth really is Yahweh's and the fullness thereof. And all of us who dwell in it. And it is so much his that he tells us in 1 Peter chapter 3 that he will be making a new heaven and a new earth. Well, righteousness dwells in the old heaven and the world. But when he says wherein dwells righteousness, it means wherein dwells righteousness, peace, and joy exclusively, only, and no more torment and testing and temptations from the evil. See? These are promises. And as I said at the beginning, we are all heading to be metaphysical. So the school allows us to choose, or to have Yahshua choose for us and we accept. And you crucified with him and you are resurrected in him. It's a mystery. Just read you. Colossians chapter 1, verse 26. And then after that, we verse 3 of Colossians chapter 2. Even the mystery. Mm -hmm. It has been it from ages and from generations. Yeah. But now we manifest these sons. Mm -hmm. To whom we have been made known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the nations, yeah. which is Yahshua the Messiah in you, mm -hmm. our only hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Yahshua the Messiah. The we do is the same we who will say, Come let us make man in our image. It's Yahweh Elohim who is operative in the human soul. Mm -hmm. Right, because in him dwells, that's about verse 3 of Colossians 2 and the Bible. Colossians 2 and verse 3? Yes. In whom are in all the channels of wisdom and knowledge. Now, the mystery or enigma or puzzle is that which is hidden. So a great portion of it is still hidden in him. <coughs> Read on. And in this I say, this any man should be valued with enticing words. Yes. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet oh. I am with you in the spirit. No, it's not really Paul. He's not important. Yahshua is our guy. You see? He is our pastor. Thy rod and thy staff, they come from you. You know? So he is the one to get rid of that fluff. You know? Beguiling words. The flood of false doctrine, which we looked at. The flood of the way that seemed right onto a man, which we looked at. Because we cannot afford to forfeit the resurrection throughout eternity in our glorified state. All praises be to Yahweh Elohim Yahshua. Hallelujah. <laughs>
and show us more word before the world appears. Where they create as they read it and actually exist. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna send out the first thing and what he spoke the truth. You understand? And I will see now and lift the truth as long as he spoke. You understand? You understand? You understand? You understand? Because that's what we come down here for. Or watch where they speak, or watch where they speak, or slow where they speak the truth. And what I think was dealing with the all the animal is emphasizing the scripture. Get the fact from it. There's a way that's even right. Where's that proverb sign from? 14, 12. 14 and 12. That's what I will talk about actually a little bit. Okay, you can't believe you're a way, you have to go Yashka way. You understand it? Yeah. If you're white, you sure that life. Yeah. You understand it? No, get it. Read it for me. Yeah. There's a way that seems right. There is a way. It only seems right. Can we read that listen? We think it right, don't it? It seems right. See that kind of body I got away. I see that this is the right way, but we realize that it was wrong. So we are sure this side. Read. But the end thereof is the ways of today. Because if you follow the Lord Jesus Christ and follow the doctrine in the church, you will end up in the lake. You will die. Your soul will be dead. Because it's a soul, the soul that sins shall die. And you shall say all souls are mine. You shall say all souls are mine. You understand? So the soul that sins, and what you shall after? You must be a soul. And those who are standing by, you after hear all of those. Now read. Continue? Mm -hmm. Any problems? Yes. Yeah. Even laughter, even laughter, the art is sorrowful. Even laughter. The art is sorrowful at times. You see, a man see a laughing face but a crying heart. A man see a face but don't know your heart. There's only you should know your heart. That's the art of man. The art of man is this for the wicked. So you need an art transplant to the cup down here. The real art transplant. So you have to know the art. Read. And the end of that mirth is evidence. And the end of that? And the end of that mirth is evidence. Yeah, read. The backsliding in Africa will be filled with his own days. You know, it's called a backsliding, right? <laughs> That's an extinct backsliding, right? Can I do the Yahweh say, Jeremiah said, backsliding is really called it. You understand? 